Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. This lecture follows on from the last one where we had a look at our numbered ACLs, both standard and extended, with a lab demo. In this lecture, we're going to configure a named ACL. The scenario is that PC1 here is my administrator, so I need to give them access to Telnet to R2 at 10.0.0.2, but nobody else should have Telnet access to the router. And PC2 is my network monitoring system. And from there, I need to be able to ping R2 to check that it is still up. And I don't want anybody else to be able to ping R2. I want to hide it a little bit for security reasons. Okay, I'm gonna be configuring this on R1 again. And if you remember from the last lecture, we had a numbered standard ACL going outbound on fast 0 slash 0 that was blocking traffic from the 10.0.2 network going to R2. So that ACL, I'll leave it there. It's already blocking all traffic, including ping and telnet to R2 from the PCs. So I just need to control my access from the 10.0.1 subnet. I want to allow telnet traffic from PC1, I want to allow ping traffic from PC2 going to R2 and block ping and telnet from everybody else apart from those individual hosts and allow all traffic. Now I've already got an ACL configured inbound on fast one slash zero from the last lab exercise. So let's remove that first. So I'll go on to R1 and if I do a show run for interface fast one slash zero, I can see there is my IP access group 100 in. So what I'll do is at global config, I'll go interface fast one slash zero and I'll say no. And then I will copy and paste that line to remove it. Now doing that just removes the ACL from the interface. The ACL was still there in the running config. But if I do a show run and scroll down a little, you'll see there's my access list 100. So it's still in the running config. It's not doing anything right now because it's not actually applied on an interface. Okay, so let's do this configuration. So I'll go to global configuration and I'm gonna do a named access list here. So the syntax is very similar, but a little bit different. For a numbered access list, the command starts with just access list. For a named access list, it's IP access list. So IP access list, let's check the syntax. I need to see whether it's a standard or extended ACL. Here, I'm specifying who the source and destination is and the port number, so I need to make this an extended ACL. The next thing I do is give it a name. This is going to be applied inbound on fast one slash zero interface, so I'll give it a descriptive name, fast one slash zero underscore in. That way, anybody that's looking at the ACL later is gonna see where this ACL is being applied just from the name of it. Okay, so, I create the ACL and then you see the difference from a numbered ACL is just takes me to the ACL sub commands here. And now I can put in my access control entries. So the first thing I wanted to do was permit TCP from the host 10.0.1.10, that is PC1, going to host 10.0.0.2, that is R2, and I'm gonna allow telnet traffic. So equals telnet. I want to deny Telnet from everybody else. I'm already denying from the 10.0.2 subnet with my other ACL I've already configured. So here I'll deny TCP from 10.0.1.0 
subnet mask 0.0.0.255 going to host 10.0.0.2 equals telnet. Now I did it this way so I could show you configuring the subnet and the wildcard mask. Another way I could have done it and which would probably actually be better in the real world is permit TCP from any going to host 10.0.0.2 equals telnet. Just in case uh, later on I have another subnet behind the router on that side and I want to block it as well. You, know, you can do it either way, whichever is going to make more sense when you're doing it in the real world. Okay, next one is the ping traffic. So I'm going to permit, now this is not TCP or UDP or IP, ping is part of the ICMP suite. So I'm going to permit ICMP, it's coming from host 10.0.1.11 now, going to host 10.0.0.2, it's my router, Let's check our options and you'll see there for ping, it is echo. So I will permit echoes from 10.0.1.11 and then I'm going to deny from everybody else. So deny ICMP from the subnet 10.0.1.0, wildcard mask 0.0.0.255, going to host 10.0.0.2 and echo again okay so i'm allowing telnet from 10.0.1.10 pc1 to r2 blocking it from everywhere else and i'm allowing ping to r2 from pc2 at dot 11 and blocking it from everybody else now at this point all that's going to be allowed is just that telnet traffic from pc1 and the ping traffic from PC2 because of the implicit deny any any at the bottom of my ACL. I don't want that here. I want to allow all other traffic. So I also need to permit, and it's all traffic. So it's permit IP going from any going to any. That's my ACL done. As usual, the thing that's easy to forget is to apply it to the interface. So I'll remember to do that. So it was interface fast one slash zero IP access group and I named it to so scroll up to check and here we go fast one slash zero underscore in I'll actually just copy and paste that in with a right click and then I can do it either inbound or outbound looking at our topology diagram on fast one slash zero the traffic is going from the pcs going to r2 so it's coming in on fast one slash zero it's going out on fast zero slash zero so i'm applying it on fast one slash zero here so the direction is going to be in okay that is my acl done now we need to check it so i will go on to PC1 and PC1 should be able to telnet to the router R2 at 10.0.0.2 and I'm getting the prompt so that is all good I'll break out of there and I'll try pinging 10.0.0.2 and this should fail great it was unreachable so that is all good and then I'll check it from PC2 and PC2 should not be able to telnet to 10.0.0.2. That's blocked, that's good, but should be able to ping to 10.0.0.2. Also from here, I should be able to ping my other subnet. So let's check where PC3 was. It's at 10.0.2.10. So let's ping there from one of my PCs, ping 10.0.2.10. And this is where it was important that I remembered to do that permit IP any any at the bottom of the ACL. If I had not put that in, this ping would fail. Because I did, all other traffic is allowed, including this ping going to the other subnet. Okay, so that was my ACL configuration done. One last thing to show you is, actually I need to be on R1 for this, so let's go into R1. To see what's going on with your ACLs, 
you can do a show access list and there you can see all of my acls and you can see how many hits you're getting on each of those different rules in the acl as well also notice here that the access control entries have got an index number at the start that allows me to inject other entries in between them if i need to later so there is my my different acls i can see the configuration on them i can see how many packets have hit each of the different entries it's all good okay so that was our configuration for access control list i'll see you in the next lecture thanks for watching if you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now then you can enroll in my ccna gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description it also includes full study notes quizzes and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else